your early education in science, uh, how you got into catalysis. Good. Uh, is it enough enough sound so that you can hear it? I think if so. I, if I speak at this level. I think so. Right. So, uh, as you know, I was born in Krakow, which is an old center of uh, learning and uh, cultural development. And, well, the, one of the oldest uh, universities in Central Europe is located. So there is, and at that university there was a very old tradition in surface science. We had uh, Professor Smoluchowski who in the 19th century, at the end of the 19th century, uh, started the theory of colloids. And then he was followed by uh, Natanson and Shishkovsky. Shishkovsky was also an eminent uh, specialist in uh, surface science and discovered the so-called Shishkovsky equation relating the uh, surface tension to the concentration of the uh, solute. Uh, then he was followed by Professor Kaminsky, who after the war had the chair of uh, physical chemistry and electrochemistry and was himself educated by, uh, in Donald's laboratory in uh, Liverpool before the war, so he developed in Krakow uh, a large group working on surface properties of liquids. At the same time, uh, in the Department of Inorganic Chemistry, Professor Bielanski was developing uh, the uh, surface chemistry of solids. So when I uh, studying as a student at the university, I, uh, I, as a matter of fact, studied two, uh, two, uh, made two specializations, namely I made physics and chemistry simultaneously. I'm a, I am a physicist and a chemist. And this was, of course, always an ideal combination to get involved in surface science, where both uh, approaches were needed. And I was uh, lured by, away by Professor Bielanski to come to his laboratory and start to work on the electronic theory of catalysis. These were the early 50s, the, year, the early 50s, when, as you remember, uh, electronic theory of catalysis was uh, born and developed by Wolkenstein, Soviet Union, by Haufe in Germany, uh, by a grand guy in Paris. So, uh, and, uh, the whole world was uh, was fascinated by the uh, tremendous progress of uh, solid state theory. It was thought at that point that with this tremendous progress in, in the theory of defects and the theory of, of uh, solids, generally speaking, it will be possible using the same tool to explain also the surface properties and in particular the catalytic properties. So when I, uh, when I joined the group of Professor Bielanski, my uh, PhD thesis were concentrated on experimental uh, confirmation of the main conclusions of the electronic theory of catalysis. And uh, may I remind you that uh, this was the first experimental confirmation of the relation between the catalytic activity and the chemical potential of electrons in solid, which is expressed by the uh, position of the Fermi level in the world of literature. This is how I started my work in catalysis. Then, uh, for my postdoc, I went to Britain uh, and uh, worked first with Frank Stone on the photo on photo uh, oxidation processes, and then uh, uh, after this this uh, uh, burst of of uh, interest in uh, semiconducting properties, a second wave came, and this was the application of uh, crystal field theory and ligand field theory. When I arrived in England, it was just the uh, beginning of the application of, of uh, uh, crystal field theory to the uh, 
interpretation of the behavior of, of various uh, inorganic solids. Uh, and we, we thought with Frank Stone that it might be interesting to try also to explain the surface properties by using the concepts of, of uh, uh, crystal field theory. Uh, this was ti uh, the, uh, the time when Dowden first proposed that you might use the crystal field stabilization energy to interpret some of the, of the catalytic uh, properties. And uh, we started with Frank Stone a uh, research on, uh, on uh, well, experimental confirmation of these uh, concepts. And eventually, by using photo desorption experiments, we were able to show that indeed uh, the crystal field stabilization energy may be moved in the surface process. And after, after completing my, PhD, my, my postdoc with Frank Stone, I moved to London to Imperial College, where I joined the group of uh, Tompkins. And I worked on uh, some of the surface properties of metals. I used the uh, contact potential measurements to determine various surface transformations. Uh, and nomen omen, uh, the first reaction which I studied was the interaction of uh, hydrogen and nitrogen to form ammonia, like my great namesake <laughs> <laughs> Haber did uh, uh, 60 years earlier. Uh, so this is how I, I extended my interest also to, uh, to uh, surface, surfaces of metals and to new techniques. And when I returned to Krakow, uh, I started to investigate, to apply the uh, uh, studies of uh, photoprocesses uh, to the interpret, uh, to to, the, uh, to to get a better insight into the transformations of uh, molecules and surfaces and their interaction with surfaces. And uh, this was just in the period when uh, oxidation processes began to be interesting. Uh, may I remind you that in the uh, early 60s there was a great boom in the introduction of selective oxidation into industry. Uh, so I thought it might be interesting now to see to what extent uh, the concepts which were used uh, uh, in, in catalysis can be now uh, applied to the interpretation uh, of the reactions of oxygen. And I started the studies of selective oxidation of uh, hydrocarbons. And uh, this was in the 60s. Uh, we started with, with late 60s, we started with the classical system of uh, bismuth oxide, molybdenum oxide, and we tried to sort out which are the elementary steps process and this led us to the concept of uh, nucleophilic and electrophilic oxidation. Namely, uh, well in, the, in each oxidation process uh, you have uh, the, the direct interaction is not possible because oxygen is a triplet and, and the hydrocarbon molecule is a singlet. So you have either to activate oxygen or to activate the hydrocarbon molecule to get the reaction uh, going. And now when you activate oxygen, you transform it into a strongly electrophilic species. And it is it seemed obvious that such uh, species will attack the hydrocarbon molecules in those sites where the density of electrons is high. That, will, it, that is, it will attack mainly the pi electronic system. Like whereas when you activate uh, the hydrocarbon molecule, you create sites where there is a deficiency of charge and you can then perform a nucleophilic attack by an, by an oxide ion. The oxide ion, the O2 minus, is obviously not an oxidant and the only thing it can do is to perform a nucleophilic addition. And in that way you can add uh, the, uh, you can add oxygen or by the way any other uh, heteroatom to the hydrocarbon skeleton without changing the structure of the skeleton. 
And this, this uh, was the basis of the concept of dividing all the oxidation processes into electrophilic and nucleophilic and to sort out what is the mechanism of these two types of processes. But, uh, 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 all, these, all these things were uh, done uh, at the Krakow University at first, but then in the late 60s I was approached by the Polish Academy of Sciences and the, the then president of the academy decided that catalysis and surface science becomes so important that it is worthwhile to organize a special institute which would be devoted only to the studies in catalysis and surface chemistry. Uh, taking into account the traditions of Krakow in this field, the, it was obvious that Krakow was the first choice. And I was approached by the president uh, with a proposal to organize an institute of catalysis and surface science and surface chemistry. And so how it started. Uh, I then uh, made a journey uh, around uh, Europe and, uh, and uh, Japan to uh, see how other institutes are organized. At that time there were only three institutes of catalysis one in Villarban in, uh, in uh, France, one in uh, Novosibirsk in the Soviet Union, and one in uh, Okai, in Sapporo in Okai. After, after discussion, discussions with, with uh, colleagues in these institutes, I came to the conclusion that our Krakow Institute will be slightly different from that. Namely, this was a period when people working in uh, uh, surface chemistry uh, began to divide into two groups which uh, began to lose contact. Uh, namely, uh, one group was formed by people interested in dry surface science, and those were publishing mainly in surface science, for instance, or journal of catalysis or, or uh, similar journals, and the other group was a composed of people interested in wet surface science and they were publishing in Journal of Interface and, and Colloid Chemistry. Uh, although physics behind those types of phenomena was of course the same. So I thought that uh, we may gain a lot if we combine all these activities, uh, take them to bring them together into one an institute where people will have opportunity to discuss things. I was hoping that there would be a cross-fertilization of ideas between dry surface scientists and, and wet surface scientists. So we have now in the institute all three lines of research, gas solid interface, liquid solid interface and liquid liquid and liquid 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 gas interface. And this concept proved uh, quite fruitful because many ideas uh, in, uh, in our dry surface studies were born just through discussions with the colleagues who are, uh, who are working in wet surface science. Uh, to give you an example, uh, a few years ago we have discovered a phenomenon of uh, spreading of one solid over the other solid which we interpreted uh, as a wetting, uh, just borrowing the concept from, from the liquid solid interface. It turned out that the thermodynamic formalism uh, is the same, and uh, the, the uh, driving forces are the same, so that two phenomena have a striking similarities are practically this, the, the two two examples of the same physical and uh, physical reality.